Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are going on a journey today. So, hush child. Can't you hear them chanting? My mother told me years ago that my grandfather was Igbo, and there's a place in the Gullah Islands that is called Igbo Landing. And the reason for this Igbo Landing is hush, hush child, listen. When the slave ship came into the Sea Islands and the slaves understood what was happening, they were chained together and they walked down the gangplank and turned back to the ocean. And one after one after one of the chains went back to the ocean. They would rather, they had planned to go back to the motherland. So their bodies left, but their souls stayed. And so she said on any given night, if you're real quiet, hush, hush, you can hear them chant. So today, we are going to visit the Gullah Islands, the Gullah Geechee Islands, and it chain island along the Atlantic coast from south of Cape Hatteras for a thousand miles along the coast of the Carolinas, Georgia, and Florida. The Atlantic Ocean moves quietly along a stream of more than a thousand low flat islands, twisting up tidal creeks in the marsh and farmland and green swamps, forest of angel oaks draped with Spanish moss and rivers of gray and black and brownish water. The sea islands, as they are named, have been home for more than 500 years of indigenous Native Americans and Blacks imported from Africa. Both group, groups of people became slaves to toil the land while the white planters, plantation owners, many of the planters were slaves, moved to these islands from the Bahamas where slavery was abolished in the West Indies. So today, we are going to take a look at these communities and what makes them unique and above all, the people here in Hawaii, you want to see their struggle to save their land, their language, their culture, just as the Hawaiians are trying to save theirs. So let's venture on into the Gullah Geechee Islands. We need the land in order to hold on to who we are, the pride, the culture, the history, and everything goes together. We must keep people away who, whose interest is not the survival of the culture, but whose interest is purely financial. The will to survive, the story of the Gullah Geechee Nation, is the story of the survival and struggle of a little known piece of American history. But who are the Gullah and Geechee people? Where do they come from? And why is so little known about them? Join me as we go inside this society that has survived in almost total obscurity for more than 300 years. From the Gullahs of the Carolinas to the Georgia and Florida Geechees, we'll explore the history, the present, and the fight for the future for what has been called the most authentically African community in the United States.
carry, Lord, and take all in each your field. All oh, yeah, with this morning and this pestle and thing. When all that spirit went together together and walk so every This African American woman was born and raised in South Carolina, yet she is speaking in her native tongue. The language is called Gullah or Geechee, and it is the language and the lifestyle of more than 500,000 African Americans living along the southeastern seaboard of the United States. We got taken from West Africa because of our skills in growing rice. Many people desired rice growers, and so Gullah people came as a result of their skills in growing rice. Emery Campbell was born on Hilton Head Island, where he still lives today. Gullah, which we spell today G-U-L-L-A-H, was actually from the Gola people, G-O-L-A, which came from the Rice Coast or Windward Coast region of West Africa, as we once called it, al Kebula. And they were some of the rice cultivators that were brought in to harvest Carolina gold rice. Marquetta Goodwine, born on St. Helena Island, South Carolina, founded the Gullah Geechee Sea Island Coalition in 1996. In July of 2000, she was elected chiefess of the Gullah Geechee Nation by a council of elders, and in the African tradition, assumed the name Queen Quet. And then you had from the same region, the Gizi people, G-I-D-Z-I, -I, which Geechee, which we spell now G-E-E-C-H-E-E, -E -E, came out of. Along with their knowledge of agriculture, the Africans also brought a unique sense of architecture. Tabby itself is a unique architectural unit to use to build any kind of structure because it's made of oyster shells, lime, and sand and water. Saplo, St. Helena Island, and Hilton Head, we, we consider them Ellis Island because that's where freedom first came. That's where folks had the first opportunity to buy land and, and, and live on their own land. That's where people became educated for the first time, had their own schools and reinforcing their own education from Africa as well as learning new things about a new life. During the Civil War, many Gullah Geechis bought land. It wasn't all just given to us. And almost everybody I speak to, I can ask them if they ever heard of 40 acres and a mule. And they go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I said, well, what is it? And you get all kinds of answers. But normally, I don't get the answer, special field order number 15. And special field order number 15 was issued during the Civil War by a general named William Tecumseh Sherman. And a lot of people know about Sherman's march that came through the South and burnt down everything. But they didn't know about him actually looking around him and going, well, wait a minute. There are thousands and tens of thousands of, as they called us, Negroes at that time here that were in ragged clothing, that were on all of these plantations because everything from Jacksonville, North Carolina to Jacksonville, Florida, and 30 to 35 miles inland that people called the Gullah Geechee Nation was all plantations. But now we were the only ones on those plantations. So it was like, well, what are we gonna do with all of these folks? And so he felt like if all of it from Charleston and all the abandoned rice fields southward to Ferndina, which is down in Florida, the southernmost tip of the Gullah Geechee Nation, if they could split up the land in 40 acre parcels and issue it to each one of us, then each family would have a place to remain on themselves. Well, that field order got rescinded. And when that happened, there was a lot of turmoil. Those who had the field order issued and land issued and granted, they were fought to get the land back, ran off in some places. But fortunately, many of our ancestors had that mother wit, so they didn't go for somebody giving them something. They went to auctions, and they bid on their land, and they took ownership of the land. So see, when people come here now to this land, that we call the Gullah Geechee Nation. 
a lot of times they don't ask us what we're doing, how we do it, why we do what we're doing, or anything like that. And so they don't have an understanding of what this land really means to us. And that it's not just about walking around with the sweet grass basket on your head. It's not just about seeing someone still picking cotton or having their hands blue with indigo, but it's about what is still existing here now. And for us, land is our family and the waterways are our bloodline. And so a lot of times people will come in and want to buy it from us. And they don't understand. That's like asking us to resell our entire family on an auction block all over again. So see, when them the things say, them be done, had them all together. In an effort to communicate with each other, the enslaved people combined the many dialects and customs of their African roots with those of their American captives. So we ain't going what no resulted way. was a we hybrid language and culture, which proved to be not we only an exclusionary we means of communication, but also a critical key to their yeah. very survival. We mean for evil, but God mean for good. So when that true we are, instead of broke up, we joined together. We, we are Geeches. We are saltwater Geeches. Cornelia Bailey, author of the autobiographical book God, Dr. Buzzard, and the Bolito Man, is a lifelong resident of Sapelo Island, Georgia. You know, we were those fast-talking uh, Geeches and the people from the mainland that said these no-talking saltwater Geeches, we can understand a thing the same because they're speaking too fast. From island to island of the Gullah language, you will find variations of that language, just like any other language in the world. And Geechee is just one of the dialects that grew out of the Gullah language, or as linguists would call it, it is a pidgin or a bridge language, because what it does is it still has our same structure, but it has more loan words from English in it than Gullah does. You know, the, the origin of the word Geechee was not necessarily a proud connection because it was actually, the or, or, it, it turned into something that became a, uh, a put down. Ron Johnson is president of SICARS, Sapelo Island Cultural and Revitalization Society Incorporated, which sponsors Cultural Day, held annually on Sapelo Island, Georgia. The, the slaves that were settled here on these islands had constantly connect, was constantly connected with their culture and they, they, they kept their language and they spoke broken English and their English didn't develop as fast. When the slave masters would bring um, slaves f with him from the interior, say from Atlanta or someplace, to, to buy slaves or to visit the plantations down here and the, and the slaves would interact, well, you had one slave that was speaking formal English and a slave, another slave was still speaking a real broken language, which became Geechee. Now the, the, the guy that spoke formal English would go back to Atlanta and says, man, you should hear those Geechee speaking down there. We listened for the speech. We listened for the words. We listened for Huna, which means you. We listened for Da, which is the verb form to be, and however that's connected. And we listened for some cultural expression uh, like, you know, a teeth the diggy grave, meaning you're eating too much. We, we listen for the missing THs and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the words that they, when they pronounce teeth or, or thief. So if I was saying, look, you're well out of the wine right now, look, you're honey better come here now, for I juke you. Okay, that would be completely in Gullah. Now, if I changed over and I said, well, we are wine boy, you need for come here now, you ain't even want me for juke you any. Okay, then that's more Geechee because I'm trying to now convey to this person who didn't get it the first time what I actually had to say. We've got terms that I use almost regularly. Juke, juke is, a, is a Gullah word meaning disorderly and that, that word is, is now used to describe a place where we go and dance. We call it a juke joint. But juke box came out of that, that same word. We, we hear the word tote often, tote. You have tote bags, you know, that you find, you buy, you buy, and you, it's very expensive, but it, it's carry, it's to carry. You tote it on your head, and uh, Africans tote things on their head. When, when African Americans visit the, the islands, they, uh, they're first of all struck by the speech and the accents. And, and we always have to explain that the accent is nothing more than African accent. They sometimes want to related to West Indies, to the West Indies accent. And I, we usually have to convince them that no, some of us came straight here from Africa, but even the settlers of the West Indies also 
uh, can relate their language and their accent to the West Africa. And so the gee whiz always come from, you know, wow, you talk funny, you sound like an African. And we usually respond and say, we are. When people come from other parts of the country that doesn't have that, that connection to the culture as strong as we are, that is... It may be different, but we're, we're all a branches from the same culture. We have our own language. We have our own heritage. We have our own culture. That the rest of what people call African American, that's just a big umbrella over a multiplicity of cultures that are in North America, particularly in the United States. But we're not monolithic as people of African descent. Many of the people who are considered African American today can trace their roots back to the Gullah Geechee Nation, but they no longer hold the legacy because they don't have the language. They don't have the African traditions. They don't know how to work the land or live out of the waterway. And, and, and that's the lesson that people can learn once they, before they go to Africa, they need to visit these islands and hear the accent and, uh, and get used to the rice dishes too, because there are some rice dishes that are used sometimes now in mainstream America that uh, African Americans don't know where they came from and why they like rice or why they like sweet potatoes or, or why they even like watermelon, although some of us have denied that we do. Uh, those can be traced back to West Africa, the food waves. Growing up on these islands in isolation of other cultures and uh, and other people and instilled in us a sense that uh, we know who we are and we never had to compete with others to, uh, to give us value. And so our values came straight from our ancestry. As recently as the 1960s, the Gullah and the Geechee people practiced their religion in the tradition of their ancestors. Uh, we traditionally seeked, and we seek through, uh, through the woods. We seek uh, God by going into the woods three times a day. Morning, we call it four day, which means before daybreak, uh, midday, and evening. And you meditate alone in, in the thickest woods you can find. Faring nothing, no snakes, you know, fair snakes or mosquitoes or anything because uh, we found out later that that's what West Africans did. And West Africans went into the woods because they said that's where God is. In some, in some plantations, Christianity was imposed. In some plantations, we found out that some people resisted Christianity. Wow, what a journey. We are delighted and excited that Queen Quip was not able to join us live. So we are going to go back to the video and visit some more of the Gullah Islands. Here, most of us still have our deeds, and today we have to fight issues in court under situations that we call heirs property because we begot the people where we show who we've been. And so we are still the heirs to this land and this is our legacy. This is our family. Their blood, their bones, their sweat, the placenta even from the babies that were birthed here is in this soil. And so for someone to just wanna buy it or tell us, well, you could live somewhere else. But you're right, we could live somewhere else, but what quality of life would we have? You take away the land, you take away the culture, you take away the history, and it's not gonna work. So hence goes everything. So we need the land in order to hold on to who we are, the pride, the culture, the history, and everything goes together. Land value is going up, and people are using it now as a commodity because cash is needed. And uh, we have less time now with, with our family because everybody is out trying to get enough cash. To, uh, to get the things we want instead of what we need. We must have control of what uh, occur in the community. Several efforts to preserve the Gullah Geechee culture are being made both individually. This is a tradition that came from Africa. 
because they used to make these baskets, much bigger basket for working in the fields and taking stuff to the market. When my son was in high school and my daughter both was in high school, and they like to go buy those $70, $80 pair of shoes, make a basket to buy your shoes. <laughs> and, and also, I want them to learn how to do this also. And collectively, organizations like SICARS on Sapelo Island and the South Carolina Coastal Community Development Corporation on St. Helena Island are just two such organizations. Well, I think part of what we do is we look at the culture of food mm -hmm. in the community. We look at how we can come together as a community and help more people create businesses around food and come up with a central label that will represent the Gullah Geechee Nation, Nation and mm -hmm. use that as a marketing niche. We practice uh, working with the baskets. We still cast nets. We still build boats and the things that the early slaves brought to this country, the same traditions and things we did for to survive then. We still practice those things as part of a way of life here on the island. Take everything old and make it new again. My thing is you have to go back in order to go forward. So we have to take all the resources from our generations uh, back and then bring it forward and make it an economic base. So what we need to do is take everything that we learned, syrup making, drying fish, uh, cast, making cast net by hand, making rowboats, making toys for our children, the way we cook. Those are the things that we introduce to the outside world and make a living from it. And so we're still holding on to your integrity, your pride, your history, your culture, and you're making some money and you can stay. There's still some semblance of that value here in these islands because people still have that kinship and they have the respect of the elders. And as long as the elders can continuously uh, gain that respect and uh, maintain that respect, we'll probably, we'll probably have a semblance of survival still. The fate of the Gullah Geechee Nation is still unknown. But what is known is that the history and contributions of this culture provide a living link to the past. When all that spirit been together together and walk so, it ain't been just dry long so. See, they been together together so this year they would have come and we would have won all of this year where we would have lived together once again. He ain't been gonna be no more Madawa daddy or none in Bakra man, none in thing like that. Cause this year. So you know I'm gonna ask God to let me live 100 years. My friend said, you are 100? She said, yes. So she went to bed that night, she got ready to bed, she got her bed, she said, I'm she has to go to live in We have people that live other places and they can't wait to come back home. As soon as they come back home, for instance, they take off their shoes, they wanna go clamming, they wanna go fishing, they want some peas and rice, they want some smoked mullet. So even though they're in the city, as soon as they come back, it reverts. And, um, and we don't want to lose that. And they know that they come back, there's land for them to put their feet on that belongs to them. I think there are lessons here. There are lessons where people valued family and kinship, as well as caring about one another. And, and, and that was necessary because of the fact that we were isolated and we had to rely on what we knew. Uh, traditional traditions from West Africa, customs from West Africa, even foodways, and and we and we passed that along, and we shared that with uh, with whomever needed it, and so we met the needs together. Uh, that's one lesson. Secondly, uh, the lesson of economic development: maintain land ownership, uh, produce their own foods, produce all of the things that they needed for life how we use it to, uh, together in terms of a cooper cooperatively together. Uh, nobody owned the land, people shared land. And uh, the new economy has caused us to change that, but uh, most of the time, land was used as people needed it. I think the other lesson is, is, is education, how we learn and who we learn from. Uh, everybody who can teach taught, and everybody tried to learn what they needed to learn in order to to make progress. To lose this culture would be to lose a piece of American history. And as many believe, 
to dishonor a people for a second time. So even now, when people come into the Gullah Geechee Nation and they try to figure out how come we seem like we're so joyful, how come we seem like we're so happy all the time, and they're like, oh, y'all still sing all them old songs. Well, those old songs are new songs in our soul and in our spirit because they always do the same thing they did for our ancestors who created the spirituals that are now South Carolina state music. They help to revive you. They help to keep you in that continuum because nothing is about just this moment. Moment. Everything is about what happened before and what is coming in the future. Even now, the Gullah Geechee Nation tree is bodies intertwined because we know we can never survive without that interconnection. We are that fruit that grows off that tree. So if we know the roots are ailing and we want more fruit in the future, then we have to dig into the past. We have to know our story. And who better to tell our own story than our own people? And so that we know through all the work that we're doing, who we da down ya, and we know we da dear ya, we da been ya, and we ain't a going nowhere. This road has not been easy, forged from shame. I to hold on to from whence we came, stretching a lifetime, first free, then a slave. And let's not forget the longest road yet is the one to ancestors' grave. We've been through the valleys, but now we're on high ground. Free for eternity and we will not come down we face a lot of troubles and the fire is still alive oh, against all odds we'll make it with the will to
what a trip. Isn't this marvelous that we have this magic of the internet and all of these wonderful things that we can visit these lands far away that we have no concept of. So I thank you for joining me on this visit to the Sea Islands and we'll see you next time. Aloha.